And these are NC. This is your pen. It comes from Madrid. Keep it with you at all times. But I don't know how to write in Spanish. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I have to get Isaac out there. Okay. Sorry. Oh, a little more si sideways. So I can... Okay. Wait. Go. Okay. Give it a hammer then go. Now who's standing there? I see sandals. And coming over. Michael, we can't hear any hammering. Okay, hammer.
more. Please. Oh. Okay. Oh, this was a whole one? Yeah, that's it. You see it? Okay. Um, well, initially, um, I had met Cesar Pelli some years before, and there was discussion about doing something else, and um, it didn't happen. I was too involved, and 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 then I was um, uh, asked again by um, by Cesar, by um, Julie Myers, and they came to the gallery and asked me if I'd be interested. And, I was immediately because 
I wasn't working directly up towards an exhibition, and I, I, I found the, the essence of what they were describing extremely exciting. That was the beginning. And, um, and so, I've, you know, I followed, I followed, I followed their um, descriptions of the project. And at first, um, because of the, the particulars of the, of, of, the, of the mural arrangement of the panels that were going to be designed, Somehow, that they had an idea that I might not be interested in doing it, but I, as I said, I was, because um, I, I actually find um, um, certain restrictions exciting and interesting. So that that was my initial. This was some that over this last couple of years, yeah. and. For me, no. No, not at all. I've done a few. Um, I've just completed a tapestry for um, De Beers, a 17-foot tapestry, um, but, and I've done one or two other things, but not, not at all. So this was a, this was a challenge. Simply because of the divisions of the panels, there was an, uh, the idea that um, that maybe they'd get in the way of the, the the scene that I might have depicted. Because, as you can see from my work, uh, on one level, it it does uh, it is descriptive. Layering, exactly. Um, sorry. Yes. What sort of subject matter and theme that ran through your mind when you were looking at the space that you'll be, be going into and the environment that you're going into? And then how did that change over time? Well, I'd made, I think I made a decision that if I was going to do something, it was going to be a f direct follow on from what I did anyway. So, and I, 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 I took the opinion that if they were um, asking me, then it was because they knew and responded to what I did. So I took one of the themes that I'd developed up to this point, which was the skaters. Um, the skating scene, which came from, uh, initially came from uh, um, painting the, um, or drawing um, the skating rink in Central Park. But that wasn't your, your original concept, was it? You had some other concepts Well, it actually was my original concept, but then I, I felt that it was only right and proper to, to, to give myself or to give um, um, Cesar Pelli Associates a, um, a, another alternative. And so I'd been working, I'd just come back from the Far East um, and I'd be, where, where I'd been doing a series of paintings of walkways, um, which again was a follow-on from the, the, the idea of movement, which a lot of my paintings are about. Um, and so I presented a, a, a series of sketches of, of, of that. And, and I think it was the general opinion that if I'd, if I'd done a, a, um, a mural of that, it might have been a bit too manic for the oncoming crowds looking at the painting as they went. I think they might have scared them out of the airport. So we felt that the uh, skating was slightly more restful um, to the eye. Whether it is or not is something else. Yes. Um, well, the way I work, whether it's for a commission or not, comes out of um, doing often um, drawing um, a sense of place or being in a certain place and responding to it. And out of that response, there's some kind of manifestation. And, 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 and invariably, in the way I work, the, um, their direct drawings and sketches being there on the spot. And so uh, in this particular instant with the skating rink, which was the Wallman rink, um, you might remember the, the Donald Trump thing of resurrecting that place a few years ago. I, was, uh, um, I did endless drawings. And then I made various small paintings. 
and gradually over the years, I think I probably developed, I don't know, not too many, maybe about eight or nine paintings, smaller panels, building up to um, actually what I've eventually done now of the, uh, in, in full color. But the, um, a lot of the paintings were essentially monochromatic, which was about the image against its um, shadow fields, um, it, it looking down, which it was. Well, um, I got halfway through the painting. I mean, I, the, the initial um, drawings came out of, um, came, 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 was a direct result of the, of the process of painting that I had arrived at before in the earlier paintings. And they were, as I said, were essentially monochromatic, even though the black and white was built up of color. I mean, you look at them as black and white, but actually, if you look closely at them, and some of the stages of the paintings prior to that had been in full color, but I'd finally realized and finished the paintings essentially in, in silhouette form, black and white, all the silhouettes and the shadows of the figures. But in this case, and because of the scale and the size of it, I got to a certain point where I'd, about six months ago, I think it was, um, where I looked at it and it was sort of finished. And I thought, mm, it's okay, and it was, you know, it was, it was certainly um, had a lot of good things about it, but I, I just felt it wasn't there. And that's the interesting thing about painting. As I said, it's a process by which you look at it and, and everything that you've built up towards maybe intellectually before suddenly doesn't hold, and so you have to break it down. In that case, I, I, I reworked it thoroughly. And, and as I've said to you, I've taken records of this painting all the way through, and and it's an organic process, and so like um, it started realizing itself in full color because that's what it needed. Period. Yes. Right. Well, often I, what I find, particularly on a painting, if I'm um, working on it a long time, in this case, you know, it's been, over, it's been um, nine months or so, if not more. Um, um, you have to, I think, I think the problem for a lot of artists is that, you know, they can get locked into a kind of mannerism or the, or the language. And so they, they, they start to get a caught with, um, the, the activity of painting, and, and, w and which I can either lead to mannerism or illustration. I'm finding that middle course is a very difficult course. Um, in my case, what I did, I referred back to the orig original subject, so I'd go back and draw. And so when I was drawing in front of the subject, what you actually found was that you're less inclined to be self too absorbed with what you're drawing, you're, but you're responding. And, and so, um, and everything was in such fast movement, and the skaters coming and going, and sometimes there'll be a few, sometimes there'll be less. And so when I came back to the studio, um, I was painting what, what I'd refreshed myself concerning what I was responding to. So in other words, it, it was messier than I'd, I'd around, uh, that I thought I'd arrived at. So I, in other words, I had to do, halfway through, I essentially just destroyed what I had before. Which is, which is, in fact, um, it depends how you view it. I mean, uh, destroy, add to, d depends what terminology one uses. You know what I mean? So for an extra, does it probably see layers of, of earlier, earlier? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I live with that every day. I'm quite happy to sort of completely, well, I wouldn't say happy, because happiness is something, but if the painting demands that you destroy it or you, you add more things, or you subtract more things, or you turn it on its head, then that's what you do. It's an abstraction. The, the, the way you work, I think, is fascinating. It's almost like out of the old school. But, and one of the few people, I think, who goes around and looks for a sense of place and tries to incorporate it into your paintings. Could you follow yeah. up in your, your sketchbook and go out and trip the back and then do your sketch and then come back and incorporate it in the picture? Um, sure. Um, I think 
I, I, I what I would say there would be two things. One, yes, what you say is true, and it's also not true, um, in the sense that, yes, I do work in terms of a, a kind of classical procedure of working from responding to something. As a result of that response um, and wish to express something, there's ultimately some kind of manifestation. I don't invariably conceive the manifestation until I've had a response. That seems to me like a, a natural breathing process. Um, then I think sometimes in the past one has made that mistake and got to the manifestation before you've had the actual response. So when I talk about the essence of a subject, it's because of my response to that. By the same token, um, um, if you follow that idea through, you know, the classical procedure is to take, you make drawings, and then maybe you make just pastels, and, and then from pastels you make smaller studies, and from smaller studies you eventually arrive at the bigger painting which you square up and you, you um, uh, proceed to do. And often the case, you'd find a case in the, you know, the 19th century that sort of a lot of the salon paintings would be very dry and dull because like a lot of the exciting drawings were done before and then finally the salon painting was the, was the, the official piece but it really wasn't often very interesting. And I think artists, you know, um, maybe um, sometimes maybe this, the salon piece was the thing that they wanted to do the least and the initial work was the most interesting. So in my case, uh, I mean I'm a long way getting around to it but uh, when I was an early, when I was a student, I was very interested in certain artists like Rauschenberg and Jasper Johns, where you approached a painting as, as an abstraction. You approached it rather as a whatever it takes. You turn it on its head, you add this, you subtract that. So like whatever your source is, um, you, um, is one thing, but the, pro the process of the procedure is up for grabs. You do whatever you need to do. So, so I, so, in that sense, I, I'll present a contradiction. Which kind of gets us around to more the, the, the thematic side of, of all this. Um, this. This is realism in, in a certain sense, but it's also abstraction as well. It's right. Motion and flow. And, and your origins were abstraction when you first started with your, 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 um, your painting. So this is really a continuation of that. Can you talk about that and sort of walk us through that? Um, Yes, I can. Um, again, slightly contradicting you in that uh, um, I did show you some early abstractions. That wasn't my earliest. The, I mean, the, the uh, you know, because I've always painted and drew. And so when I was a three-year-old kid, I was drawing things that I'd see on Hampstead Heath in London and come back and make a passable painting of what I'd seen. So from my point of view, um, I'm telling you about what I've responded to. The essence of what I do is what I've responded to. And then I give you something of myself in the process of painting it. Um, and that can be more or less, depending. And so in different, different stages of my working career, I've become more or less minimal. And there was a period in the late 60s and early 70s where my work, having gone through when I was in my early 20s, in the, in the middle 60s, um, I'd gone through a period of being quite influenced by a lot of American painting, um, of the abstract expressionists, and, 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 and then on to people like Rauschenberg and Johns, and more, which was more conceptually based, um, but was, which was still essentially about painting. Um, and, and gradually, then after that, I moved into a minimal period, which was to do with abstracting down the process of painting. So um, there was a period where my work was not representational. But it still derived from something seen. And then gradually, from then on, I built back into that infrastructure the, 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 the subjects, if you like, that interested me. And, uh, for example, you know, what interests me is the way light falls across a field. I, I mean, I don't mean a field, literally a field, a field of, of sight and, 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 and my corresponding feelings about that.
Yes. Uh, and there's also a, a great sense of flow of emotion. Yes. Can you talk about that specifically? Yes. Uh, I think I, what I'd probably say to connect what I last said to what I'd say to what I'm saying now is that painting is like making a, 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 a grand sandwich. It depends what you show at the end is what you're presenting, but what you actually, the process of what you go through can be any number of different procedures. And I think a lot of people have this idea that, you know, that, 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 the, that the initial concept is the final concept. In, in the case of your, in relation to your question, um, there's many different hats that I might put on in the making of a painting. And so in, in the case of the underlying abstraction and the structure and the geometry, and the way the light, the, the way the light informs the, 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 the field of vision, and my corresponding way of manipulating paint to relate to that field of light, and, and the way the, the, the geometry of the figures flow through um, th this, this particular painting, um, was, it was a matter of trial and error, of pushing it this way, pulling it that way. And so one has an innate sense of structure, if you like, irrespective of the literal significance of the subjects. And I said to you earlier, I could strip the literal significance of this painting quite quickly. I mean, we probably do, I won't do it. I mean, but we could do a demonstration where I could, I could take out and leave you the forms, and the forms flowing in their space. But as you know, in painting, um, painting is a phenomenological experience. It's like the relationship of the object in relation to the space is, is inter are, are dependent upon each other. And like the, the form or the, is, not, is dependent on the space, and the space is dependent on the form. So in that sense, it's, it's an abstraction. And good painting is, and bad painting isn't. Yes. Um, well, I mean, uh, that's, that's sort of uh, an interesting composition that has always interested me, whether, I mean, if one's interested in the history of painting, um, you can study Giotto or Pier della Francesca or and go through, to, through various paintings, realist paintings. And, um, and you will see, you will see with, a, with a, a, uh, either of those two painters um, that, that you scan the field of the painting and you'll see paintings in paintings um, relating to the space of that particular um, scene. Um, interesting enough, with Giotto, it's kind of interesting. What hasn't been experimented with very much in a I think for many, many years, is that if you look at a Giotto, you'll see different time frames and different time structures. So it won't necessarily have one time frame across the whole scan of the painting, even though when you look at it, it looks like it's one, it was one view, one moment, one shot. It's actually many shots and many... Um, can, can you actually 